Hi everyone, uh, my name is Tetsu Iwata and I will present our work on Beyond Bruce Bound Secure Cryptographic Permutations from IEL ciphers with long keys. Uh, this is a joint work with Ryota Takamichi. So this talk is about uh, cryptographic permutation or uh, CP. This is a non-keyed public permutation, and this is designed to behave like a public random permutation. This is a core primitive of permutation-based crypto used in sponge constructions and used as a primitive to construct hash functions, encryption schemes, message authentication calls, and authenticated encryption schemes. We will write NCP for a cryptographic permutation over n bits. So an NCP is just a permutation with n bit input and n bit output. We want to have secure and efficient constructions. And in practice, we have a lot of proposals of dedicated designs as a primitive. We have the permutation of SHA-3. There is a 384-bit permutation Gimli. And there are many other proposals. In this work, we are interested in provably secure designs. There are constructions by Kaohan et al. and by Go and Lin. And both constructions use ideal ciphers. So an ideal cipher is an ideally secure block cipher. An ideal cipher P is a mapping from k bit keys and n bit plain texts into n bit cipher texts. And if we fix k, then PK is a random permutation over n bits. We will write this as KNIC, but we are more interested in the case where the key length is kappa n bits for some kappa at least one. Uh, like in this figure that has kappa lines of n bits as the key. This is a construction of Koran et al. And this is a 2n CP that uses n n ICs. Ideal ciphers are unkeyed because this is one of the inputs and the entire construction is a non-keyed permutation. The security was analyzed in the indifferentiability framework of Maura et al. And it was shown that with two rounds, the construction is insecure. And with three rounds, the construction has the Bruce bound security, where Q is the number of queries. They also considered a more general case of a domain extender for the ideal cipher, where the construction takes a k bit key as input, which is used as a part of the input in ideal ciphers. The construction is a keyed permutation, but in this work, we focus on constructing a cryptographic permutation. So we consider the case that k is equal to zero. This is a construction of Go and Lin, and this is a DNCP that uses kappa and NICs. So there are kappa lines here where D is kappa plus one. So here we consider IL ciphers with long keys. The security was analyzed in the indifferentiability framework, and it was shown that with 2D minus two rounds, the construction is insecure. And with 2D minus one round, the construction has Bruce bound security. And again, they also consider the domain extender, uh, but in this work, we focus on constructing a cryptographic permutation.
Uh, this table summarizes the previous results of Goran et al. and Goran Ling. And in both results, uh, Q should be at most 2 to the n over 2. And this is called a birthday bound security. The question we ask in this work is whether we have a construction with stronger security, namely if we have a construction with beyond birthday bound security. In this work, we show that for a 2 NCP, by adding two more rounds to Coron et al's construction, we have the full n bit security. For a DNCP, by adding two more rounds to go on Lin's construction, we have the full n bit security. In the general case of 2D plus 2L minus one rounds, where L is a parameter between one and D minus one, we have the security bounds, uh, but we need the assumption that Q is at most two to the N. Uh, these two results are actually special cases of this general case. Uh, because this one corresponds to these parameters and this one corresponds to the case that L is equal to one. As far as we know, our result is the first cryptographic permutation that is built from n-bit ideal ciphers and has a full n-bit indifferentiability security bound. Now let me present implication with practical parameters. We fix n as 128, and if we have an n, n, i, c, this parameter corresponds to a is 128, for instance, we obtain a 256 CP, and we have 128 bit security with five rounds. If we start from 2n, n, i, c, AS256 could be an example. We obtain a 384 CP and we have 128 bit security with seven rounds. And with nine rounds, we have a stronger security bound, uh, but we still need the assumption that Q is at most two to the 128. If we start from 3N and IC, like skinny 128, 384, we obtain a 512 CP and we have these security belts. Uh, we remarked that um, block ciphers have to be somehow tweaked so that we have independent idea of ciphers. And uh, we also would like to remark that we are not proposing th these instantiations, but we use them to illustrate the practical parameters. Uh, they are not efficient, and for instance, it is known that AES-256 doesn't behave like an ideal cipher. Here, uh, let me clarify the relation to the previous work. Uh, Minematsu and uh, we analyzed uh, related construction in this figure. This is very similar to the construction we study uh, in this work. And in the previous work, uh, the primitive is a keyed tweakable block cipher. So the adversary does not have access to the primitive. And the security was analyzed in the indistinguishability framework. In this paper, uh, the primitive is an ideal cipher. So the adversary has Oracle access to it. And we analyze the security in the indifferentiability framework. So we analyze the security in the indifferentiability framework of Maura et al. In the real world, uh, the adversary has a construction oracle and primitive oracles. The adversary can make construction queries and primitive queries, and the construction oracle also makes primitive queries. 
In the ideal world, the adversary has Oracle access to a random permutation and the simulator. The goal of the simulator is to mimic the primitive oracles and the simulator can make queries to the random permutation oracle. The goal of the adversary is to distinguish the two worlds and we measure the success probability with this advantage function. And we say that the construction phi is QC, QP, epsilon indifferentiable from a random permutation if there exists a simulator S such that for any adversary A, the advantage is at most epsilon, where the adversary makes at most QC construction queries and at most QP primitive queries. We use patterns coefficient H technique and its refinement by Che and Steinberg in our security proof. We partition all the transcripts that have a no zero probability in the ideal world into good transcripts and bad transcripts. We then compute epsilon one from the ratio of the interpolation probabilities of a good transcript and epsilon two from the upper bound on the probability of having bad transcripts in the ideal world. Then we obtain the upper bound on the advantage. So I would like to present an overview of our security proof. Uh, we will use an example of D equals three and L equals one in which case we consider a seven round construction. So here is the seven round construction and so we also have seven ideal ciphers as primitive oracles. Our approach is to give all the internal variables of the construction to the adversary through primitive queries and we force the adversary to make a primitive query immediately after a construction query. Uh, we show the theorem against adversaries that make these extra primitive queries. And during the proof, uh, we formalize the concepts of upper and lower queries to complete the proof. So let's first see how we define the oracles in the real world. Assume that the adversary makes a primitive query plus P4, X456, which is a shorthand for X4, X5, X6. So the adversary is requesting a value of X7. We compute X3, X2, X1 with the backward direction of P2. 3, P2, and P1. We also compute X7 to X10 with the forward direction of P4 to P7, and we give everything to the adversary. Uh, here is another example where the adversary makes a primitive query plus P1, X123, uh, requesting a value of X4, but we compute all the values of X4 to X10 and uh, give all of them to the adversary. If the adversary makes a construction query plus X123, meaning that the adversary is requesting a value of X8, 9, 10, the construction oracle uh, makes this primitive query and returns X8910, which is a part of the answer uh, for the primitive query. Right after this, the adversary makes uh, this primitive query. And this is how we define the oracles in the real world.
Uh, next, let's see how we define oracles in the ideal world. Assuming that the adversary makes a primitive query plus P4, X456, requesting a value of X7. And we have to define a simulator to simulate the primitive oracles. Uh, we compute X3, X2, and X1 with the backward direction of P3, P2, and P1. We also compute X7 with P4 in the forward direction. Now the simulator makes a query to the random permutation to compute X8, 9, 10, and returns everything to the adversary. We say that the primitive query is an upper query if it contains one of these values regardless of the query direction. And for those queries, the simulation is similar to this case, where we use the forward direction of the random permutation to compute x, 8, 9, 10. On the other hand, we say that the primitive query is a lower query if it contains one of these values regardless of the query direction. For those queries, the simulator uses the backward direction of the random permutation to compute x, 1, 2, 3. Now a transcript can be summarized as all the values of x1 to x10 from the first query to the last query. Uh, in the real world, we see that uh, these inequalities hold because this corresponds to the input, this corresponds to the state here, this corresponds to here and so on. And because the construction is a permutation uh, the collisions are impossible. However, uh, in the ideal world, we may have these blue collisions if the ice query is an upper query, and we may have these red collisions uh, if the ice query is a lower query. So we define that the transcript is bad if we have one of these collisions. Uh, we will not discuss the general case, but these are the high level ideas in our proof. And with all these definitions of the simulator and the bad transcripts, we can complete the security proof. We can show that the upper bound on the probability of having bad transcripts uh, is given by this, where we use uh, this assumption to derive the bound. We can also show the lower bound on the ratio uh, of the interpolation probabilities for any good transcript. And we obtain the final bound from the coefficient edge technique. Now let me conclude this presentation. Uh, in this work, we showed that uh, with 2D plus 2L minus one rounds, uh, we have this security bound, provided that uh, the number of queries is at most 2 to the n. Uh, there are several open questions. Uh, the tightness is not known. Uh, for instance, we do not know if there is a 2 to the n attack against the two and bit construction with five rounds. Uh, we also do not know if the condition on the number of queries can be removed. And the tightness on the number of rounds is also not known. For instance, we do not know uh, the security of, uh, of the two and bit construction with four rounds. Uh, finally, uh, this paper and previous results assume independent ideal ciphers. And the security of a construction obtained from one ideal cipher is left as an open question. 
this is the end of this presentation and thank you for your attention.